an unsettling affair between teacher and student, a failed attempt at action, and a movie that should have stayed in hell. Adam Sandler may be one of the highest grossing actors of all time, but even he isn't immune to having a few bombs along the way. 1994's Airheads stars Adam Sandler alongside Brendan Fraser and Steve Buscemi as three struggling musicians in the metal band The Lone Rangers. After many unsuccessful attempts to get record producers to listen to their music, the trio head to a radio station to try and get a song broadcast. When the DJ refuses to play the song, they hold the place up in a last-ditch effort to get their demo on the air. While Buscemi was already well-known when Airheads came out, neither Sandler nor Fraser were the heavyweights that they would later become. Fraser's first box office success wouldn't come until 1997 with George of the Jungle, and Sandler was still a year away from releasing Billy Madison, his breakthrough movie. While Sandler was a regular fixture on Saturday Night Live, he didn't have enough star power to attract large numbers of moviegoers, and a wave of negative reviews likely didn't help Airheads either. What's more, Airheads launched when metal music had become unfashionable. Grunge was the popular genre at the time, making it harder to market the film to a wide audience. It grossed just $5.7 million at the US box office and, with a reported budget of $11 million, became known as a flop. Airheads went on to become something of a cult hit in metal circles, but was otherwise lost to history. Sandler was in high demand after Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore proved that he was capable of fronting a big screen comedy. His next project was a collaboration with Damon Wayans, where the duo teamed up for a buddy cop action comedy called Bulletproof which was basically an attempt to create a funnier version of Lethal Weapon. However, while Lethal Weapon was a big hit, Bulletproof became a box office misfire. Have you been drinking, sir? I had about a half a beer, but the dog had a lot. Bulletproof follows Sandler's Archie Moses, a drug dealer who is unaware that his friend and colleague Jack Carter is actually an undercover cop. Following a mishap that sees Moses shoot Carter, the two end up on a cross-country journey to testify in court, all while being pursued by a drug lord. The film reportedly cost around $25 million to make, but it couldn't even get back that amount, pulling in just $22 million worldwide. The film's failure wasn't a huge surprise considering its reviews. It was lambasted by critics and is regarded as one of Adam Sandler's worst movies. In fact, only Jack and Jill and The Ridiculous Six have lower scores on Rotten Tomatoes. The general consensus is that the film wasn't sure what it wanted to be. It wasn't funny enough to be a hit comedy, and the action scenes weren't exciting enough to entice adrenaline junkies. Written by Adam Sandler and longtime collaborator Tim Herlihy, Little Nicky sees Sandler play the kind-hearted son of the devil. Sensing that none of his sons are ready to take over the rule of hell, Satan extends his reign, much to the anger of his two other sons. When they revolt and head to Earth to cause chaos and establish a new hell, Nicky is sent by Satan to put a stop to his brother's plans. Little Nicky is among Sandler's biggest financial failures, mainly because the film was so expensive to make. While it managed a worldwide box office gross of $58 million, it had a production budget of $80 million. That made it incredibly hard for the film to be a financial hit, given the amount of tickets it would have to sell. Little Nicky also had a disastrous reception from critics. And it also faced competition from another Satan-inspired movie, in the form of the Brendan Fraser and Elizabeth Hurley comedy romance Bedazzled, which was released just a month earlier. The fact that Sandler's character was plain annoying was the nail in this film's coffin. I've always dreamt about having sex with a gross pig. Many people expected Punch Drunk Love to be another triumph for Sandler, especially given it was written and directed by acclaimed filmmaker Paul Thomas Anderson. Sandler plays Barry Egan, a socially awkward and occasionally violent business owner who falls in love with Emily Watson's Lena Leonard. Their budding relationship faces a number of struggles, including an extortion attempt. Unlike the majority of Sandler's box office bombs, Punch Drunk Love garnered favorable reviews from critics and was generally well-liked by those who saw it in cinemas. But it was also very different from the type of projects associated with Sandler. Sure, it proved that he could act, but it didn't appeal to his regular fan base, which was a big reason it failed financially. Punch Drunk Love also marked a different direction for Anderson. Speaking to the Los Angeles Times, the respected filmmaker revealed that he set out to do something entirely different with the film. As he put it, I found like I'd become pretty good to a certain extent at my job. I wanted to scare myself. Unfortunately, both he and Sandler seemed to scare off fans of their other films. Adam Sandler was not known for animated fare when Eight Crazy Nights dropped in 2002. The movie follows Davy Stone, a man in his 30s who is constantly in trouble with the law. After dining and dashing, he is given one last chance at redemption, and ordered to carry out community service under the watchful eye of basketball referee Whitey Duvall. Along the journey, Stone learns about the true meaning of Hanukkah. Sandler voices both characters along with several others. Eight Crazy Nights reportedly cost $34 million to make, 
but it only grossed $23.5 million, and much of that is the result of the film just being plain terrible. It drew the ire of critics for a predictable story and bizarre product placements, as well as unfunny and outdated jokes. What's more, audiences had already seen a lot of Sandler in 2002, with the actor appearing in Punch Drunk Love and Mr. Deeds earlier that year. The holiday schedule that it dropped into was also highly competitive, which made making a profit even less likely. What's more, the film was made using traditional 2D animation in an era when CGI films were all the rage. Traditional, hand-drawn animation seems quaint and old-fashioned next to the films being put out by Pixar and DreamWorks. James L. Brooks returned to the director's chair for 2004's Spanglish, seven years after his critically acclaimed dramedy As Good As It Gets. Adam Sandler stars as the patriarch of a well-off family that includes his overbearing wife and their two children. When the family heads to Malibu for the summer, they take along their Mexican housekeeper and her daughter. Much of the plot revolves around the interactions between the two families and how they differ. Though it certainly fared better than many of Sandler's other releases around that time, Spanglish didn't exactly set the world on fire in terms of critical reception. That goes some way to explaining why it bombed at the box office, making $55 million worldwide from a budget of $80 million. However, there were some other factors that contributed to its poor box office performance. What really made life difficult for Spanglish was the fact it came out amid a packed release schedule. December 2004 saw big hitters such as Meet the Fockers and Ocean's 12 arrive in cineplexes, as well as family-friendly films such as a series of unfortunate events and the Tom Hanks-led Christmas movie The Polar Express. This array of films ticked all the boxes for the type of moviegoer that might have otherwise opted to see Spanglish on the big screen. While he has comedic roots and is best known as a comedy performer, Sandler has shown over the years that he is a capable actor who is talented enough to lead a drama. Rain Over Me focuses on former college roommates who reunite and help each other through significant turning points in their lives. Despite having more critical success with his dramatic performances, these types of Adam Sandler films have never been a particularly big draw when it comes to audience numbers. And the same is true of this Mike Binder buddy drama. Despite Rain Over Me being a pretty good movie, it managed a worldwide gross of $22 million against a budget of $20 million, making it a failure after marketing and other costs were factored in. Perhaps the main reason the film failed to attract big viewer numbers is the subject matter. Sandler's Charlie is a man who is clearly struggling to process the fact that his wife and daughters were killed during the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Those events were still too fresh for many moviegoers, something Binder was well aware of. Speaking to Entertainment Weekly about the risky movie, the director said, I don't believe in looking down and seeing how far the fall is to the ground. Especially in this situation because that's what made it interesting to me. It was a story worth telling. On paper, the Adam Sandler film Funny People probably looked like a guaranteed hit. It was written and directed by Judd Apatow, and it features talented performers like Seth Rogen, Leslie Mann, and Jonah Hill. Yet, it somehow failed to make a splash at the box office, bringing in $71.5 million against a production budget of $75 million. Fly like a man, get on your feet, would ya? I don't know how to fight, I'm a comedian. The main issue is that the film has an unusually dark and depressing tone for a comedy. The story revolves around Sandler's George Simmons, a movie star and stand-up comedian who has become disenchanted with the entertainment industry. Upon being diagnosed with cancer, he takes an interest in an inspiring comic, while also attempting to reevaluate his life and his relationships. In the end, moviegoers weren't sure if they were paying to see a comedy or a drama, which clearly impacted the overall takings. Limiting its audience further was a mighty running time of 146 minutes. Typical for Judd Apatow, but far longer than most comedies. That's My Boy is a film that follows the same basic structure as most Adam Sandler movies, in which the exact same things tend to happen, only the jokes are a lot more dirty than usual. It stars Sandler as Donnie Berger, an unemployed slacker who is on the verge of going to jail for debts owed to the IRS. His only way out is to reunite with his estranged son, Todd, who he fathered with a teacher while he was in school. Teacher-student relationship? Do you know how gross that sounds? Critical reception for That's My Boy was low, and that likely impacted the film's earning potential, but there was more to it than that. One of the major issues was that this 2012 movie was such a departure from Sandler's other comedies. It had a far raunchier plot and a bizarre premise that involves statutory rape, with a later twist throwing incest into an already problematic mix. It's not surprising that it underperformed at the box office, grossing just under $58 million from a budget of $70 million. Sandler proved once again with That's My Boy that he doesn't have the same sort of box office sway with R-rated films as he does with his PG-13 releases. Directed by Jason Reitman and based on the Chad Colton novel of the same name, 
2014's Men, Women, and Children was a box office disaster of epic proportions. Sailor is part of a talented ensemble cast that plays various characters and in interconnected stories about families and individuals dealing with the internet and digital technology. The film's opening takings were the fifth worst ever based on a movie with a wide release, and it ended up grossing just $1.7 million worldwide. How did this happen? The star power was there, but the book was clumsily adapted for the screen, and the marketing campaign from Paramount was pretty much non-existent. Perhaps execs were relying on the names involved to get bums in seats, but that's never a good strategy. As BoxOffice.com's vice president and senior analyst Phil Contrino told The Wrap, it's a myth to say that people show up reflexively. Stars generate interest, but there has to be a story that people care about. Look at Tom Hanks in Cloud Atlas. He worked very hard to promote that movie, but it still wasn't enough. 